Hello, I'm Teacher Robin. Welcome to another live streaming class. Today we're going to be talking about interjections and changing the subject in English. So, how can you participate during the class? If you have a question, you can write your question in the comments and I'll be checking your comments as we go along. So, if this is your first time to join us, feel free to say hello in the comments. And again, if you have a question, please write it and I will try to answer all of your questions at the end of the class. Okay, so today's topic is interjections and changing the subject. So maybe you don't know exactly what that is in English, so let's start first by defining what is an interjection. Okay, we use an interjection as a part of speech uh, used in informal language to express emotions or sudden bursts of feelings. Okay, so uh, you'll understand a little bit more as I show you some examples, okay? So let's say you want to get the attention of others, of someone. You use an interjection. So this could be something like, hey, for example, hey, Audrey, I thought you weren't coming to the party. So if you want to catch someone's attention to let someone know you're talking to them, you can use this interjection, hey. Or if you want to be a little bit more subtle or quiet when you're doing this, instead of uh, drawing the attention of everyone, you can say, psst because this is the way that you, it's almost like whispering to someone. So if you want to get someone's attention, for example, you can say, Psst, Jane, go hide behind that desk before the teacher comes. So this is when you don't want other people to hear, you only want that one person to hear what you're saying. Okay, another kind of interjection to express disbelief or doubt. Okay, so when you can't believe something uh, that someone else has said, you can say, yeah, but when you say, yeah, it's not like an affirmation. It's kind of like, mm, yeah, I don't believe you. For example, yeah, you had dinner with George Clooney last night. Like, that's impossible. There's no way that's true. Another way you can express disbelief is to say, mm-hmm, which is like, uh-huh, or agreement, but in a way that shows that you don't actually agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if something hurts you, like you are hit by something, or you stub your toe, you trip and fall, for example, you can also yell an interjection like, ouch, for example, ouch, Sharon hit me with the ball. Or another way to say ouch or that something hurts is ow, for example, for example, ow, my coffee is too hot, okay? So to express feelings of pain, we also use interjections, okay? Um, if you are in trouble or if you've done something wrong, another interjection you can say is oops. Okay, oops, for example, we shipped the box to the wrong address. Okay, another kind of interjection when you've done something wrong or you're in trouble, uh-oh, uh, uh-oh, someone let the dogs out. So this is, I made a mistake, uh, I shouldn't have done that. So you say, uh-oh. Okay, did something surprise you? If something surprises you, you can interject, wow, for example, wow, uh, Timmy scored a goal. Or another way to express excitement or surprise is sweet, okay? Are you giving me a free t-shirt? Sweet, okay? So the word sweet is normally used to talk about food, like a cookie is sweet, but sweet also means that you're really excited or surprised by something. Okay, I see we have some people joining us already. Yan Paul, Dale, Sentinel, and Mustafa, and Salomon say hello. So thanks for joining and keep watching, keep participating in the comments. Okay, so now that we've finished talking about interjections, we're going to change the subject and look at different ways to change the subject in English. So let's say you are having a conversation and you want to talk about something different, this is changing the subject. Or let's say there's something that you really need to, uh, to bring up, this is uh, some polite ways to change the subject. Okay, so we're going to look at some different ways to do this. All right, one way to change the subject in English is to say, now that I think about it, okay, so this expression is um, appropriate in informal context, so just talking with your friends, etc. So you can say, now that I think about it, do you remember Jonathan? So in this case, maybe you've realized that not everyone in the group knows each other. So you say, now that I think about it, okay, do you remember Jonathan? So you introduce 
uh, your friend to the rest of the group, for example. Okay, another way to change the subject, that reminds me of, okay, so this is similar. It's useful when um, something mentioned allows you to introduce a new topic. So if someone says something and that makes you think of something else, you can say, that reminds me of the case of a friend who lost his house in a fire, for example. Okay, this is also similar. That brings to mind, okay, this is a little bit more formal, but it's the same thing. Uh, one topic makes you think of another. Um, yeah, that makes me think of, so for example, that brings to mind our hiking trip in the Pyrenees. So maybe someone is talking about their vacation and you can say, oh, that brings to mind our hiking trip in the Pyrenees. Okay, so another one that's uh, literal is changing the subject. So this is a little bit more forceful or uh, useful when you need to be direct about introducing a new topic. So if you, uh, maybe you're talking about something that's uncomfortable and you want to move on to something else, or maybe if someone said something they shouldn't have, you can just say, changing the subject. Uh, did you know that Samuel is in Japan for the holidays? Okay, so that's a way to let everyone in the group know that we're going to stop talking about this topic and we're going to move on to something else. Okay, um, by the way, what can you tell me about? So this is kind of inviting the other person to participate when you change the subject. It's an interrogative phrase um, and it gives you the opportunity to introduce a new topic by means of a question. So you could say, by the way, what can you tell me about Mayan architecture? Okay, so that invites the other person in the conversation or people to uh, participate and that way you've changed the subject and they're actually involved in the conversation. Okay, so now that we have looked at interjections and how to change the subject in English, uh, I want you to practice in the comments. So I want you to choose an interjection that uh, we have just talked about and write a sentence using one or more, two or three, as many as you want to try, and write a sentence changing the subject. So let's say we're talking about English class and you want to talk about something else, uh, then please let, uh, let's see it. Let's write it in the comments. Okay, I see many people are saying um, that this class is useful. Well, I'm hoping that it is because some of these things, um, they're not the normal kinds of lessons that we always think about in English. It's not necessarily grammar um, or anything like that, but it's something that is really useful uh, and you will improve your conversation skills if you are able to do these things to interject and to change the subject. So as you are practicing in the comments, I want to uh, tell you more about our course here at ABBA. So if you want to practice your English even more, you can sign up for our course, which is available on, um, in web form and in mobile form, so in app form, so you can study from your PC, from your Mac, from your smartphone or your tablet, and your progress is saved on all of these devices. So our course uh, consists of 144 units. Each unit starts with a short film, and then you see a video class explaining the grammar, and then you complete different exercises to practice all of your skills. So speaking, reading, writing, and listening, all of that is covered in our course. So if you want more information, if you don't already study with us, then go to abbaenglish.com and you can see everything we have to offer you. Okay, in addition, we are on all of the social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, and we are uploading new content there every day, so you can find even more useful lessons, as well as on our blog, our ABBA journal. Um, there you can find more grammar lessons, more topics like today's topic, just kind of everyday conversation um, things, so you can find all kinds of really good information on our blog, so check that out as well. Now it's time to check your questions, and I see we already have a couple. Solomon says, I used to use on the other hand, but I don't know if it works better in letters. What do you think? Um, I think you can use it both ways. As you said, it's, it's good if you're writing something. You can say on the one hand, and you make your argument, and then you say on the other hand. Um, but you can also use it in, in spoken English. That's fine. Good question, Solomon. Thank you for your question. Uh, let's see if we have any more. I think we do have a couple, so I'll just give everyone time to do that. Um, I know it takes a few minutes to 
uh, write your answers. Okay, I see we have someone wrote an example. Yanni says, oops, I forgot my wallet. Okay, good. That is an interjection. Well done. I forgot my wallet. Okay, good. Someone said, um, Connor, by the way, what will be, we be learning next week? Okay, that was a great way to change the subject and a very good question. So thank you, Connor. So next week, we are going to be looking at, um, we're continuing with a series that we do every once in a while about different ways to say. So these are going to be different ways to say, I think in English, okay? So some useful expressions. So we're not always saying the same thing over and over again, we have a little bit more variety. So tune in same time next week for, uh, for this topic, ways to say, I think, in English. If there are no more questions at this time, that's fine. Keep writing and I will uh, be checking your questions later on after the live class is over. So I want to thank everyone for your participation today. I hope this class has been useful for you and I hope that you can join us next week. So take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.